Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney Investigations. As you can see, Lot of Heart has something to chime in and pulling a Larry Butts to uh, save the situation that Edgeworth has gotten himself into. So let's see what she has to say. What? You also lost your memories? Nah, that ain't it. Something just popped in my head right now. Very well, please tell us. Objection. Uh, and Blaze does not want this. Courtney, could you tell me what you are doing? Prosecutor Edgeworth will not give up until we have destroyed every last possibility. I'm destroying every possibility so that he will never oppose us again. Ooh, sneaky. Justine, I don't really know what's going on, but well said. Pops, I'm gonna help too. After all, he's the one who's wrong. Fine then. Let's hear what she has to say. Well then, Miss Hart, please proceed. J sure thing. Just leave it to me. Please make sure you only tell the truth. Ain't that a matter of course? I'm a bona fide journalist of justice, you know? Somehow I feel uneasy. Y'all saying the culprit was the conductor, right? That means the victim was a customer. Now, here's where it gets a mite strange. You see, there were 11 people at the auction. When the auction continued after the incident, I went straight on over and snuck a peek down below. You don't mean... That's exactly what I mean. All 11 people were still there, present and accounted for. Whoa, what? B what? Are you sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. I saw it with my own two eyes. Um, so it started with 11 people, and there were still 11 people after the murder. Was it a ghost? Uh, you know, Sebastian, normally a prosecutor would call that a contradiction, you know. But were there really no changes in the auction at all? Really? I'm telling ya, the auction just went on like normal. Ah, uh, but there was one itty bitty thing though. What was it? You know those hammers you always see at an auction? Like the one that lady is using over there? An auction gavel, perhaps. Yep, that's the one. All of a sudden, I couldn't hear the sound no more. It been banging away just prior to it. The sound of the gavel. Does that have anything to do with the case? Something tells me the victim got hit with the gavel on the head. Maybe? If Miss Hart's testimony is the truth, then this matter has taken a grave turn. If the victim was neither the conductor nor a customer, the very foundation of Prosecutor Edgeworth's reasoning would collapse. <laughs> Justice prevails, as they say. I hope you've learned your lesson, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, there really is nothing we can do. It's not over yet. Some mysteries still remain. I have to think. If I don't, then Cave will be... Did you get the answer you wanted this time? Well then, a deal's a deal. I don't know who said that. Hold it. Please wait, Mr. Chairman. I believe it is still too early to make a judgment. There are still a few mysteries left in this case. Until we have solved them all, we cannot call this a complete victory. Judge Courtney, what? Isn't that right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I was expecting you to shout. Hold it, like you always do. Y yes, of course. Once again, Judge Courtney has come to my aid. Well then, what is it? What sort of mysteries are left? Well, of course, there's the contradiction in the autopsy report. That kind of thing? I brought her in! Oh boy, these two. Wh what's wrong? Why were we suddenly called here? Did something- did someone suddenly get sick? I'll begin preparing a compressed stat. Ow! What did you call me here for? Did something happen? 
Dr. Young, Miss Jensen, you have my gratitude for taking the trouble to come here. This won't take long, so please relax. Tell me what in blazes is going on! <laughs> of course. We called you here because something came up. Judge Courtney, just what are you planning? Bonnie Young, on a divine rule of law, please answer truthfully. There were no mistakes in your autopsy report, or autopsy report, correct? Granny would never make a mistake. That's certainly strange. Huh? What's strange? This court has found an error in Dr. Young's autopsy report. Dr. Young, please tell the truth. Did you falsify the autopsy report? That's terrible! How can you accuse her of that? I have no idea what you're talking about. Why would I do such a thing in the first place? To protect the true culprit, of course. What you're talking about? I would never do such a thing! How strange. In that case, why would there be an error in the autopsy report, I wonder? Prosecutor Edgeworth. What do you think? Wow, Courtney, you're just throwing a lot of bait out there. Oh, I expect you to press into her statement like you normally do. <laughs> Why is she taking control of the situation and trying to help me? I don't know what her goal is, but I must play along. If the autopsy report you gave to Sebastian had been authentic, then the error should not have been there. Wait a minute! I didn't do anything! That is what we will figure out from this point on. Firstly, Dr. Young, I'd like to hear your testimony. Why do you want to hear her testimony? It, will, it would be pointless. I will be the one who decides whether or not it is pointless, not you. There, there are patients waiting for us. But, but Granny, ouch! Anyways, we don't have time for this. Is there any way I could convince you this is of the utmost importance? Mr. Miles Edgeworth, Granny says she'll testify. So please, try to finish this quickly. If we don't return soon, there will be people in terrible suffering. And yet you were lollygagging about on the viewing platform earlier. I promise you, this won't take long. Only if she tells me the truth, of course. Ah, my phone. Moving the phone back here. Error in the autopsy report. There are no mistakes in Granny's autopsy reports. I've been working with corpses longer than you've been alive. There's no way I'd make a mistake in writing the autopsy report. Ouch! I've got nothing to gain from falsifying the test. The autopsy report is what she says. See, there's nothing strange at all. Yes, yes, that's right. You know, there's no way she would falsify it. You see. Under the name of the Goddess of Law, do you swear that this testimony is the truth? Of course! Granny would never tell a lie! Ah? We were asking Dr. Young. We don't need to hear from a third party. I'm not a third party! I'm on Granny's side! If you raise an objection to my testimony, you best prepared yourself, you ex-prosecutor! I will definitely expose the contradiction in the autopsy report. These two are kind of fun to do voices for. Anyway, uh, let's press on everything then. Oh, well, we have to skip over one of them, I believe. So, you're saying there is no way Dr. Young could have made a mistake? Of course! Doctors can't afford to make mistakes. This is a world where just one missed diagnosis can end a long career. I know that my granny, at least, would never... If I did something like that, you think they'd still let me run a hospital? She's got a valid point. So in your long career, you've never once made a mistake. A doctor's only as good as the length of their track record. <laughs> if we're just talking about a lengthy track record, that former chief prosecutor has one too. And yet his actual abilities don't seem to measure up. I hope that you're not the same as well. Ooh! Ouch, that's a low blow, you know? But you know, Edgeworth, I don't make mistakes either, you see? Cause you see, before I can make a mistake, those around me will have already made it instead. Wow! That confidence! 
You see, I don't have time for mistakes. It's quite amazing, you know? Must be karma. You can't compare a chief prosecutor with a doctor! You really can't! Uh, let's press on that too. <laughs> I like how she just hits her. The victim wore this raincoat after suffering a blow to the head, and yet there was not a single drop of blood on the front of the raincoat. Therefore, it is impossible for the head wound to have been post-mortem. Um, well, that's- ow! I don't need you to tell me that! That's what I wrote down from the very beginning! Uh. The autopsy report says the head wound was post-mortem. That's completely different. Uh, yeah. I relayed to Karen what to put down in the autopsy report. After that, it was none of my beeswax. Relayed to Karen? Please elaborate on that. Oh, I guess I got a new statement. <laughs> uh, I think that was supposed to be skipping over that. Okay. You may have nothing to gain, but how about your granddaughter? Me? There isn't anything I could gain. If Karen had something to gain, then that girl of yours might have something too. How dare you accuse my little girl, who has never done harm to anybody? Yeah, aren't you ashamed of yourself? She should address those words to Blaze instead of me. <laughs> Valid point. I swear that the autopsy report wasn't falsified. Well, maybe it wasn't falsified to you, but... Did you notice anything strange when you were performing the autopsy? I wonder. Huh? What is it, Granny? A strange man came by. Who are you calling strange? He wore some really strange clothes. He even had a frilly thing around his neck. Uh... <laughs> Even though he was about to get canned. He still tried to run amok around my autopsy. I'm talking about you, you frilly red brute! Huh, I see. So Mr. Edgeworth is a strange frilly red brute. Hey, please, don't only remember odd things about me. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like Granny is lying. Huh. Miss Jensen is the one who is relaying Dr. Young's words. I'll have to confirm whether or not Miss Jensen is telling us the truth. Well, I think Karen is a little bit suspicious after we found out something. Alright, let's press here. I would like to verify once again what you saw when you examined the body. Um, like we said- Ow! Oh, well, about that. She was done in by a thump by her to a noggin! Dr. Young, do you know what that- when that happened? Before she died, of course, the wounds on her chest were post-mortem. Wait, wait, what? That's what I relayed to Karen, so that's what should have been written in the report. <gasps> what? That's what you relayed to her, eh? I'm finally beginning to see the truth. Um... Karen, did you just realize your granny just kind of out you? Alright, let's see where the autopsy report is. Wait, what? Yes! Okay, I was scared. I was like, just gotta be the autopsy report! Dr. Young, please confirm what this autopsy report says with your own eyes. Ah, uh, I'll read it out for you. Ouch! Uh-uh. Smack her harder! This autopsy report wasn't written by me! Wh what What do you mean? Uh, uh. Oh! I don't know. <laughs> but but Granny, I I can't say that. Miss <laughs> Jensen, if you are trying to keep the truth in the dark, then in place of the Goddess of Law, I shall hear your confession. Judge Courtney is talking with Dr. Young in private. What? Is that true? Understood. I shall convey your words to everyone else, Dr. Young. I properly relayed the autopsy report orally to that child. It seems my granddaughter must have mucked it up when she was writing it down. 
Wow, she mimicked her voice perfectly. There was no need for her to go that far, though. In other words, the contents of the autopsy report had been falsified. By your hand, Miss Jensen. Uh, oh, I, I... With that, we've proven that the wound on her head came first, followed by her chest wound. Miss Jensen, why did you falsify the autopsy report? Hold it. Hold on a second. She never said she falsified it, you know. She just made a teeny tiny mistake when she wrote it down. Postmortem and antemortem. God, sounds kind of familiar, you know. They are complete opposites. That is the very definition of falsification. Miss Jensen, why would you lie? Okay, ow! I want you to tell me too! Why would you do something like that? Granny, but I... Because you falsified the autopsy report, Kay fell under suspicion. Tell me why you did it. I... I, I can't say. I just can't say it. Not I don't want to say, but I can't say? You're all a bunch of bullies, you know? Ganging up on this poor girl who loves her granddaughter so. She is totally unrelated to this. I think we can forgive her for one tiny mistake. Objection. That won't do. Aren't you the one with the most to lose if she testifies? Huh? What are you saying? You see, as a former prosecutor, you'll have to speak a little more clearly, you know? Very well, as you wish. I shall answer clearly. Miss Jensen played an essential role in this case. Because she was an accomplice, I believe? Yes, she was an accomplice. That is the only thing. Miss Jensen, Miss Jensen, excuse me, falsify the autopsy report in order to assist the true culprit. Ah! Uh, ah! <laughs> this girl is an accomplice? What's your basis for that claim? It was impossible for a single person to commit this crime in the first place. The crime could not have been committed without at least two people, namely because... Uh... No, 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 the number of people wouldn't match. If the conductor was the culprit and one of the auction guests was the victim, it would contradict the witness's testimony that there were 11 people after the incident. What now? You got a problem with my testimony? Not, not at all. Rather, it is because I believe your testimony, that's why an accomplice must exist. So, you still won't admit that your reasoning is wrong. Up until now, we've had not even considered the possibility of an accomplice. However, if there had been an accomplice, it changes the entire story completely. If the accomplice took the murder auction guest place, then the number of people remains, el the number of people remains 11. Ooh. Oh, I see now. So that's what you're thinking. But you know, wouldn't that have been quickly discovered? Miss Jensen and the victim have similar physiques. She, if she wore the victim's mask, she could have easily taken her place. Miss Jensen, did you switch places with the victim? I, I, I wouldn't. Who was the conductor? In other words, tell me who was the true culprit. I, I can't. I mean, that would also cause trouble for Granny. Ah, uh, ow! But Granny... I will accept whatever wrongs you may have done. Just tell me everything. G -g -g Granny! <laughs> oh my god, what a breakdown. As I thought, it appears you really were the accomplice. Miss Jensen, why? I think she was trying to protect Granny. Miss Jensen, would you please tell us? Yes, it's okay, Granny. I'm fine now. I switched places with the victim, Miss Crane. So you admitted to being the conductor's accomplice? Yes, I helped out the conductor. I don't really know why, but for some reason... The conductor was expecting to be attacked by Miss Crane. The conductor expected an attack from the victim. They were so sure it was going to happen that they came up with a plan to counter it. A way to beat the victim at her own game, and that's when I was called in. 
I was told to wait in the storeroom before the auction began. Hold it. Hold it? Whoa there, you ain't fooling my eyes. If you were waiting in the storeroom, I reckon I would've bumped into you. After all, I've been up in that storeroom the entire auction. I'm telling the truth. I wonder about that, you know? Can we really believe a girl who would falsify a report? Huh. There should have been many places to hide in that storeroom. Then by all means, tell me, where did our little nurse hide? The place in the storeroom where Miss Jensen hid was... Uh... Where is it? The costume trunk. She hid inside this costume trunk. A costume trunk, eh? Ah, now that you mention it, that box was already there before I snuck in. I figure I would hide in there myself, but it was wrapped up nice and tight with a chain. And it was locked too, so I had to give it up. I suspect that's when you sneaked into the room, Miss Jess. When you sneaked into the room, Miss Jensen was already inside the trunk. Yes, it would have been bad if one of the guests from the auction had opened the lid. After instructing me to hide inside, the conductor wrapped a chain around the costume trunk. I think they went downstairs using the lift shortly thereafter. It was right before the auction. So then... So then, when the auction began, only you and Miss Hart were in the storeroom. Yes, that should be right. The auction had been going on as usual, but... When a certain participant made a winning bid, the conductor committed the crime. Miss Hart must have heard the alter altercation that occurred then. You betcha! I was trembling behind that there statue the whole time, though. Following the altercation, Jill Crane was murdered. After killing Jill Crane, the conductor carried her body to the costume trunk. And you switched. And Miss Jensen, who had been hiding in the trunk, was made to take Miss Crane's place. The victim's body was placed inside the costume trunk. The conductor then took Miss Jensen, who had been made to look like Jill Crane, and returned to the auction hall as if nothing had happened. How did Lotta, like, not see all this? Was this roughly what happened in the storeroom during the incident? Yes, that's right. Hold it! Pulling the old switcheroo with one of the auction guests! Ain't that impossible? That gal and the murder victim are two completely different people, you know? Don't you reckon one of the other participants would have noticed and caused a ruckus? No, not at all. The reason they didn't notice the switch was because, I think it's, is it the, oh, uh, what is it? Ugh, what am I looking for here? Uh, she stole the victim's clothes. Well, I was looking for, she had a mask that had a voice thingy. From what I can tell, Miss Jensen had the victim appear to have a similar physique. Furthermore, there was a rule requiring a mask to be worn during the auction. If their clothes were the same, I doubt anyone would have noticed she was a different person. Yes, I blended right in. I borrowed Miss Crane's clothes and- Ah! You mustn't embarrass the dead like that! I know. I also thought it was pretty heartless to leave her exposed like that. So when the conductor wasn't looking, I covered her up in the raincoat that was up for the auction. So she was the one who put the red raincoat on the victim. And then the auction resumed as if nothing had happened. I reckon I took the picture of her in the raincoat after that. That'd make all the facts line up. After I took the photo, I went over to the lift to sneak a peek down below. I witnessed the 11 participants, and then I hightailed it back to behind the statue. Don't tell me. You were hiding there the entire time while we found you. Until we found you. Now that's... Uh, how should I put it? What is it? Did something happen? I didn't mention it before, but after that, I might have dozed off a little. To be more precise, I fainted. Well, something like that. So, so something did happen. Ain't no big deal. Kind of embarrassing to say, though. There was this huge thump sound all of a sudden. I was a little surprised by that. It was right after I had just witnessed a murder, so I was shaking in my boots. My heart sort of tightened up, and I was off to La La Land. When I woke up, it was already the next day around the time y'all came by the storeroom. I see, so there was a large sound. 
Miss Hart, I take it you do not know what transpired in the storeroom beyond this point. Uh, I guess. But after the auction, all the masks were properly returned. So I reckon the participants had exited through the storeroom just like I done said. Hmm. Miss Jensen, what were your actions after the auction resumed? I took the victim's place and participated in the auction. The, the conductor instructed me to win the bid for the costume trunk. Because the body was inside it, it would have been bad if another auction guest won the bid for it. You didn't realize the box was empty. No, we only found out when, we, when I came up to the storeroom to pay the bill. The conductor was with me and told me to go search for her immediately. And then I found another girl collapsed in front of the ladder. Oh, okay. Yes, she probably fell down from the roof and lost consciousness. Maybe the victim left the hatch open when she went up to the rooftop. I understand now. Kay was surprised at seeing the collapsed victim and did not notice the open hatch. She must have missed her footing and fell down into the storeroom. Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was likely the sound of Kay falling onto the storeroom floor. That might have been it. Though I reckon it'd be kind of pathetic to faint over something like that. When Miss Jensen found the unconscious Kay, Miss Hart was also unconscious behind the statue. The situation is becoming clearer to me. Miss Jensen, please continue your story. After I found Kay and the victim, I put them both in the trunk. If the customers at the auction found out, there would have been a huge commotion. Was this an order from the conductor as well? Yes, it was. But since I secretly decided to put the raincoat on, Miss Crane, I had to dispose of the raincoat without the conductor noticing. Heh, <laughs> so the conductor didn't anticipate the raincoat becoming another piece of evidence. And finally, we dressed Miss Crane in a spare conductor's outfit. I see. In doing so, you made the victim appear as if she was the conductor. In the end, the auction ended without anyone noticing anything. Huh. Miss Jensen, your crimes have become clear. If you know anything else, please hold nothing back. I want to help you more, but that is all I know. Um, if I had to say, there is just one thing that bothers me. When I took Miss Crane's place, I borrowed her clothes. But there was no way for me to borrow her hair. Ouch! What kind of coroner's assistant goes around stealing a corpse hair? I would think that robbing the deceased of their clothes would be questionable enough. Both the color and the length of our hair is different, so I was worried about how to disguise it. However, the conductor even had a wig prepared for me. In fact, he had two of them. Inside the costume trunk, there was both a straight wig and a wavy wig. Two wigs? Why were there two? Who knows? Maybe it was a precaution in case the victim had changed her hairstyle. I ended up using the straight wig to match Miss Crane's hair. So that means the wavy wig was left unused. Where is the wavy wig? Is that really all you know? Yes. Yep, that's really all I know. So that means you don't know who the conductor is. I'm sorry, I only knew that person as the auction conductor. I never saw that person without a mask on. The conductor seemed to be on guard towards everybody. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> Edgeworp, is that all you've got? Even if that little nurse is an accomplice, it changes absolutely nothing, you know? In the end, the true culprit is still K for a day. All you did was add another criminal, you know? The rule of law cannot be overturned. At least, not for your sake. If this is- is this as far as I go? Am I unable to save Kay? Objection! Whoa! Francesca! To the rescue! Francesca, why are you here? Didn't I tell you, Miles Edgeworth? Wherever there is a case, I will follow. Prosecutor Von Karma, your hard work is most appreciated. Oh, sounds like George Courtney had her off doing something. And we're going to find out what she was up to in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.